Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Last month I was talking to one of my friends and she wanted me to show her how I do my camis with my binding attachment. And I figured I would show you all as well. I know uh, that my Lowland sleep set videos are like some of my most watched, I think. But this is just an updated way of how I do them. So if you have a binding attachment, I'll link the one that I have down below. Um, it's going to be super easy and I'll show you all the tips and tricks to get this little shoulder gap perfect that I have and to get the side seams lined up as well. So if you're interested in any of that, this is today's video. So without further ado, let's get started. So first I just wanted to show you all how I cut my binding strips. This is my fabric right here and it is folded um the widest part of it is folded over twice so that it can fit on my cutting mat and then i just use my ruler to cut out one inch strips that way i have uh long strips for my binding and then i just cut off these little selvage ends that aren't really needed so that is how, how i prep my binding so here is the binding attachment that i use i got it off of amazon and all i'm going to do is prep it first so that i can start my binding and here are my pattern pieces. I forgot to show you all these, but let me see. They just look like this. And again, this is the Lolan Sleep Set Cami. But you can do this method with any cami that you have, any cami pattern, I mean, and it'll work the same. So I already had mine loaded up, but I'm just going to get rid of this and load up my new fabric. If you want a more in-depth, I can never say that word, a more in-depth, in-depth, whatever video on how I use this attachment, how to set it up, how to prep it, all of that, I will have that video uh, linked as well down below in the comments, as well as the description. If my comments ever get disabled, everything is in the video description as well. But again, I'm just going to set this puppy up and then I will show you the steps of how I make the cami. First things first, I'm going to bind the top of both camis. So this top is kind of straight and then the top of the front piece is a little curved but it's going to work the same. All we're going to do is feed it through, make sure that, the, that you catch the corner and just keep going. And of course I'm going to make sure that my binding stays in place. And all you're doing is feeding it through like this. Then I'm going to go ahead and start on the second piece right away. Just so that we're using up as much of this binding as possible. We are going to have enough. I've noticed that one whole strip is enough for one top. And then I'm just going to keep going a little bit more just until I have enough room to snip it off. And I snip it right on the edge of the main fabric like this. All right, so here's what the pieces look like. And now I'm just going to look in my pattern piece and see how long the shoulder gap needs to be. And I went ahead and checked and it's going to be four inches. So let me get my ruler. And now I'm going to use just some elastic. This is, I don't even know what kind of elastic this is. It says spandex elastic band. I don't know. But this is what I get. I just get it on Amazon. And it looks like this. You can also use clear elastic. But this I like to use because it is smaller than the width of my binding or just about the same size. So you're not going to be able to notice it when we use it. All I'm going to do is measure out four inches of this and just cut it right on top. I don't know if that gave anyone else anxiety. <laughs> I feel like Kendall Jenner when she was trying to cut a cucumber. Like sometimes I do some weird cutting things. But anyways, there we have those two pieces. Now we are going to attach these to our cami. Now, you can do this several different ways. You can serge it on if you want, just serge the whole thing because the serger um, threads are just about this thickness anyway. Or you can sew it on with your sewing machine 
and I would make it just a tad longer if you're going to use your sewing machine so that you could attach it like that. But all I'm going to do is use a hand sewing needle and just attach it a little bit. So kind of like how you um, would on the serger. I'm just going to attach it enough to where it is right on the edge. You know what I mean? So I'm having a hard time being in frame and doing this. So I'm going to do it first and then see if I can get a better angle. Okay, hopefully I'm in frame. Sometimes I can't tell. But again, I'm just going to go through my elastic, make sure it's right on the edge, and put it through on this side too. Just like that. I'm going to hold it and go over those two spots again because we want this on the edge. Again, you could add a little extra so you don't have to do this ha with it having like it floating and you could just sew it right on top. But I like to make my life harder. <laughs> just kidding. And all we need is a little bit. You don't have to worry that much. So now I'm going to snip it and do the same to the other side. Again, you can do this with your serger. All you would do is literally, all you would do is literally um, start like around here, feed it, add your elastic, serge, 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 and then add the other top of your shirt. But I'll show you what it looks like with this method. All right, so this is all you want. Here we have our four inch gap, um, and we have this as our guide. So now I'm going to feed this into our binding um, attachment. So you would start on this edge, feed it, feed it, feed it, and then you don't even have to worry about the gap and just keep feeding it through. So that's the magic of this. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, I'm going to start on this edge and making sure that my binding stays good and is being fed through. Got the corner in. And once you get to here, you literally just keep feeding it through. And you want to make sure the elastic is inside. So I always try to make sure that my fabric, everything elastic, is touching this little lip. There's like a little lip right here. So kind of push it towards the right a little bit. My binding's kind of... And then again, I only feed it just a little bit more, enough so that I can snip it. And there we have one side done. All right, here are my straps all done, and they are looking perfect. So now all I'm going to do is put these right sides together, just like this. And now we are going to sew down the side seams. So for this part, I use my serger, and all I'm going to do is hand crank it so that the needles are all the way up. I'm going to make sure that these um, are lined up as best as I can. If you want to do like another little tack with your hand um, needle or with your sewing machine, you can, but I'm just going to give it my best go and put this under my presser foot. I like to really lift it up so that it can go under smoothly and then I'm going to hand crank it again about three times just to make sure that it got in good and then I'm going to pull out the, these threads while the needles are down I like to pull out these threads and really make sure that the that they're like coming out straight so that when it gets surged over it's not too bulky I'm going to bring them over to the side now, make sure everything is lined up, and just go for it as I'm pulling in these little threads. And let me snip off this little edge here and show you what it looks like. So there we go. That's, and then you are going to get a little bulk because of the little threads, but again, the more you pull it, the better it's going to look.
So now I'm going to do the other side and then all we need to do is hem. Okay, so for the hem, the lowland pattern calls for a, what is it, a lettuce hem. And that's what I did on this little cami as well. So we're going to do that. Now, if you have the Juki serger, it's very easy. I like to lift my, my knife up. I put this dial at one, push this towards me. Oh, it should have been towards me. I mean, it should have been pushed forward, but it's towards me now. And this towards one as well. That little dial right there. Yes, my machine is very dusty, but I have not done sewing today, so I haven't cleaned it. Um, and now all I'm going to do is run is take out my left needle. Okay, I just take it out and snip the thread. I don't take like, the thread out completely. I just snip it. And then I like to run my machine just to get it all set up. And then I do have to put these dials to four. So I just remember what I had them at originally and then I just move them to four. I find that that works for me, but definitely practice before you go full on on your garment. And then all I'm going to do is show you where I line my fabric up. So I actually like to line it up right here the presser foot has like this little little groove here so i like to line it up right here that's where my fabric's going to stay at the edge the raw edge of my fabric stays right here and that's where i line it up all right let's go let's get to it so i'm going to take the back section lift my needle up and again line up my fabric right there on that edge you see you can see it see how it's lined up just right there on the edge of that little piece of my presser foot and then you can decide again when you're practicing you can decide how much to stretch it but i don't like to stretch it that much the more you stretch it the more wavy it'll be so i'm going to go ahead and finish off this hem and that'll be it for this tutorial all right, so here is the finished cami, and I am very pleased with it. it. looks so much more professional than the way I used to make them. But hey, we're always up for improvement around here. So get yourself a binding attachment. Again, I will link it down below. And if you have any further tutorials that you want me to make videos on, let me know down below as well. That is everything, and thank you for watching.